So you really need like a small bronzer brush for bronzer brush. Ugh. You need a really small bronzer blood. Oh my god, I can't speak. Hi everyone, my name is Tima and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a full face of makeup using stuff that I've had for a while but never tried. I decided to do this because I've been in a really weird mood all week and I just wanted to do a full face of stuff I've never tried before because then I can actually like concentrate on the makeup and kind of get lost in figuring out what works and what doesn't work and the best ways to like apply stuff to my face instead of like thinking about stuff that's going on in my head. So yeah, if that sounds entertaining to you guys, I hope you keep watching. The other thing is I messed around with uh, the camera angles a little bit. I messed with the lighting and settings a little bit. So I'm hoping this one will be both well, better angled and also a little bit just less orange. I, I don't like how like orangey tinted my uh, videos are. So I'm hoping this will help address that. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you think this looks better than my other videos. Okay, cool. We're gonna just jump right in. Also, I'm wearing hoop earrings and I have not worn hoops in like forever, like since I was a kid pretty much. Like, I think the last time I wore hoops was like middle school maybe. The other thing is I didn't buy any of this stuff. This is all stuff I've already had. I It's either stuff I got when I bought like a bunch of makeup at once and it just like was one of those things where it was like I got two blushes so I just ended up favoring one over the other and not really trying the other one or it's stuff that like was gifted to me or it's stuff I picked up in like charity sales and stuff like that where it was like a $30 product that was like on sale for $5. So I like grabbed a bunch of stuff and then didn't try it all because I just had had so many things. There's a couple things here that aren't totally new and I'll explain those when I get to them. And it was just because I didn't have any alternatives. I didn't want to buy anything for this. It was just like a spur of the moment video. So it's all stuff that I've just had for a while and wanted to try and just like didn't come get around to trying. So to start off, I'm just gonna prime my face with this Nude by Nature Perfecting Primer. I've never used this before, obviously. I don't think I've actually really used Nude by Nature like at all. I have like no impressions of the brand. I th they sell them at Shoppers Drug Mart, which is like a drugstore here in Canada. And I think I get the impression that they're meant to be like a clean beauty brand at like drugstore prices, which is like clean beauty is an inherently like problematic term, I think, because there's no real definition to it. But I mean, if the products are good, they're good, right? And if they're not, they're not. I don't really care. So this is like a really, this doesn't really feel like a primer to me. It feels way more like a moisturizer and it kind of like smells like super like skin carry too. Like it has like this weird like powdery smell. Like not bad, it doesn't smell bad or anything, but it just like does not have, yeah, it has like the consistency and it, the texture of like a very thin moisturizer. But then it like almost like doesn't sink into your skin like a moisturizer, like it's, it's kind of weird. I don't know, I don't know how to describe this. I don't really have any feelings for it one way or the other. It's a product. I guess we'll see how like my foundation goes on on top of it. The one thing with this though that is really hard is it's really hard to judge a primer when you're also trying a new foundation because then you don't know if something's not working because it's the primer or it's not working because of the foundation or vice versa if it's working because the primer is really good or if it's working because your foundation is great. Um, so foundation, I'm using this Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation in the shade MW2. This is like, I have no idea if this shade matches me, like genuinely no clue. I hope it does, but. I got this a while ago. I feel like when it first came out, people were raving about it. Like people were obsessed with this foundation and then it kind of just died down. So I actually don't know if it was all hype or not. Oh, this is like a doe foot applicator, which is interesting. I don't really, oh, I don't, I hate the way that smells. I don't know how I feel about doe foots as like a foundation applicator, but it's better than no applicator. I hate when it's like, and a lot of drugstore foundations are like this when there's no pump and it's just like a hole and you feel like dump it out on your hand and you always end up getting either too much or not enough and it like gets stuck and it won't come up. It lasts the worst. I don't know if this is like the right amount of foundation. So like in person, the color is a little warm, but seems okay. I don't know if it's gonna look way different on camera, like which is what always tends to happen. So like this isn't super full coverage. Like I can definitely see a bunch of my blemishes like through it, which is like fine. Foundation doesn't have to be like full coverage or even medium coverage to be good, but this is just, I don't know. This is not doing it for me. It's It smells weird and it's really throwing me off. Like I'm not like a very like, I am sensitive to scents, like I don't like perfumes that are really strong or anything, but I'm not really sensitive to like scents and like makeup, but this is like, it just smells weird. I don't know. I don't know how to describe to you what it smells like, but I don't like it. I'm just gonna try to build it up a bit, I guess, just because like, I feel like this is doing nothing for me. This is not, does, does it say brightening complex for all skin types? It doesn't say if it's supposed to be like full or medium or heavy or whatever kind of coverage, but. Yeah, this is like medium at best, I think, is what I would call this generously. It's really not. And it's not even like, light coverage is nice because your foundation doesn't look like you have foundation on, but this like looks like foundation, but it's also not covering anything. Like, it's just weird. I think this is a no for me. Like, frankly, I don't know if I love this. I think it's, it's especially gonna look bad on camera because, I don't know, it just like feels super thin. Like, I feel like my skin doesn't look good in person, let alone, like usually when I, camera, my, when I know my skin looks good on camera, it looks kind of cakey in person, but I know stuff's covered. This is like not cakey, well it's, it is cakey, but it's also not like covering anything. Like I feel like it's just emphasizing all of my texture. This is not doing it for me. The shade is fine. Like the shade, the shade match, at least in real life is okay, but I just don't, yeah, it just didn't cover anything. Like I feel like 
my skin just looks worse than it did before. So for concealer, I kind of have a um, I have a, an issue. So my issue is, this is the only concealer I have. Like the thing with concealers, I usually buy concealers with the intention of using them. Like I don't really like spur of the moment impulse get concealers, and they're not always something that will gift to you. And they're not always something you can pick up at like charity sales because you usually have like a shade that's your shade. So the only concealer I have that I just straight up have never used is this Elizabeth Arden Medium Stroke of Perfection Concealer. But I have a feeling this is like way too dark. Like I'm gonna, yeah, this like this is like genuinely look way too dark. It's gonna make my under eyes look darker. So instead, what I'm gonna use is this Kat Von D Block Kit Concealer. I believe I've used this before, but I've only used it like once or twice, and I like don't remember how I feel about it at all. So I think that's like as close as I can get to something I've never used before. Shade is good. It's like a brightening color. This applicator feels like super flimsy. Like I feel like if I put too much pressure on it, it would like snap right off. But I do like that it's kind of like angled, I guess. So this this line, like the tattoo, lock it, whatever line, is is intended to be super heavy, like ha super heavy duty, full coverage, which is like the opposite of this foundation. So I don't know if it's like <laughs> how that's gonna work, but yeah, this doesn't really budge. It's very thick. Yeah, my skin is not having its best day. Is how I would like put it generously. This is not great. Again, the shade is fine. It's a little, it's a little brighter than I would like it to be. Like it's a little too light, but it's not like terrible or anything. But it just like it like is that it's also like, is like cement. Okay. Anyway, so for uh, under eye powder, I'm gonna use this uh, Elizabeth Arden High Performance Blurring Loose Powder in Medium 03 as my like loose setting powder. Again, I've never used this. I believe I got this at a charity sale. I feel like I never hear anyone talking about Elizabeth Arden as a brand, so I don't really have any like strong feelings about them one way or the other. I'm just gonna tap off. Um, I do like the sifter's one of those like half ones, so not too much comes out. I'm gonna put a little bit in the lid. Again, I feel like this might be a little too dark. I feel like I went into getting these Elizabeth Arden products with the assumption that their medium is the same as everyone else's medium, which is pretty light, but it's not. Setting it helped actually. Setting it definitely made the concealer less of a, a shit show, I think. Like it does, it does blur. They're not lying about it being blurring. I do like what that did. So this is ordinarily where I put like press powder over the rest of my face, but I'm gonna hold off on that for a second just because for blush, I'm using this Charlotte Tilbury Lip to Cheek Dewy Color Pop Beach Stick. This has a lot of words on it. I don't know what, the, what it's called, but it's a, it's a, it's not a powder blush. So I don't want to put powder on and then put this on top because it might make this perform worse because putting creams on top of powders can sometimes go pretty bad. So I don't want to do that. I don't know if I should just put it directly on or if I should put it on my hand and then put it on. I'm just gonna, this is so pale. Holy shit. Okay. This is like way too light for me. Oh, okay. I don't like how that's applying. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to put it on my hand. This is really greasy is my, I think my biggest issue with this, which again, it's a cream blush, but it's just like, I feel like I've tried other cream blushes and they haven't been this, this, uh, this greasy. Okay, yeah, that applies way better. Like putting it on your hand and then using the brush works way better than just grabbing it directly. Um, so this is like super dewy, which makes sense because it's a cream product. So it, it will look more like a natural flush and less like you have powder on your skin, which I mean, depending on your skin texture, I think different people have different preferences for that. I use powder products just because they're easier to use, for me at least. I just don't have a lot of experience with creams, but this is pretty, I'm not mad at it. Again, this is something I got at a cherry sale. I, would, I don't think, I, I don't know how much this costs, but it's Charlotte Tilbury, so probably way more than it's worth. So I can probably safely say I would not have paid full price for whatever this is, but it's applying really nicely. Like, honestly, like I thought the color was gonna be really, like way too light for me when I first tried to put it on, but now that I'm doing it like with the put on your hand and then tap the brush in and then put it on your face method, it looks really nice. I am really enjoying this. Although I think I need to use a lot of products, especially if you're doing this method to get it to like the intensity that you want. So that's good enough for the blush. Now I'm going to take this Maybelline Fit Me pressed powder. Pressed powder was another thing I didn't have any that I hadn't already used. I don't buy a lot of pressed powders. I don't like overzealously like grab like free ones. So I've pretty much used every pressed powder I have. I just haven't used this one in a while, but I remember liking it. Again, pressed powders, I'm not picky about. There's a lot that I like and I don't have that many of them. So I can safely say I like this. Okay, perfect. I was worried my blush would, I would tamp out my blush with this when I go over it on top, but I can still see it through, maybe not as starkly, but for future reference, I just have to know to put on like more than I need so that when I go over it with the powder, it doesn't super get dulled out, but you can still see it at least in person. I don't know if on camera you can see my blush, but you can definitely still see it in person. It looks really good. So that's good. I was really worried about my face, but it's kind of starting to come together. It's not, it's not that bad. Okay, so again, for bronzer, I don't have any bronzers I haven't really used except for these little minis. They're both Nars Laguna. I'm probably gonna use this one just because it's newer and I wanna give it a fair shot, but actually no, I'll use the older one because why wouldn't I use the older one first? So I've never purchased a Nars Laguna bronzer, but 
Naris gives Laguna bronzers like fucking candy. Like it's freaking Tic Tac. Like anything you do, Naris will give you a free Laguna bronzer. I just have never use it out of, I don't know if it's like sheer spite for like how much they try to sh shove this product into people's faces, but it used to be like everybody's holy grail. So like I'm expecting good things. Anyway, so I'm just gonna like just carve out some contour. I kind of fucked up my blush placement. Like I would place my blush higher if I were to do this again. Usually I do my contour first. So then I can use that as like a line for my blush placement because this is a powder I was doing it after and I don't know if I love my placement anymore, but that's okay. Things happen. Also, sorry if my hair looks wonky. I was trying to do like Dutch braids, but they kind of came out not even and I just was like too tired and in too bad of a mood to do it again. Okay, so like I, this is a nice bronzer. Like I'm not even gonna lie to you. These minis have like really small pans. You need a really small bronzer brush if you wanna like get into these like little minis, but the, the big pans I've seen, like the full size of this is huge, so. You should be perfectly fine to dip into that with an, uh, with any bronzer bu brush, but you need a smaller one for these little minis, which is fine. How often do you go through a bronzer anyways? Like I don't, I, I, I don't anticipate myself ever buying a full size of this because I have two of the minis and if I ever get through those, I'm sure Mar Nars will have given me another mini. Like one of these was my birthday present for 2021 from Sephora, like candy. And this was like a beauty insider thing, I think. This is a nice color. Like it's, it's, it's warm enough that it's like you feel bronze, but it's not too, too warm where it's like you're orange or you can't like, use it as a contour, like it works fine. It works for the purposes of this exercise. <laughs> okay, so for highlight, I have a couple options for highlight. I wasn't sure what to do for my highlighter. So for on one hand, I have these uh, KVD Metal Crush Extreme Highlighters that I have, but I've never used because to my understanding, they're very glittery and I don't know if I love a glittery highlight. And then I have this, which I almost want to use just out of sh like sheer like nostalgia. This is a, by JCat Beauty, it's the Aura Glow Liquid Highlighter in White Goddess. So it's like very white. It might, look, it might almost be like too white, I don't know. But the thing with this is I feel like strong nostalgia for this because I, if I'm if i 99% sure I got this when I was on a trip with my friends Elaine and Becca to Merrickville. And there was this one store that I was like obsessed with. Like I literally like wanted to buy like everything in there and they had this on sale. And I was just like immediately like obsessed. I was just like, this is so glittery, I need to get it. And I did get it and then I never put it on my face. So I almost want to use this just out of sheer nostalgia, but I'm almost like, is it too, too white maybe? What if I do? Actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna use this because it's, it's way too yellow, but I'm gonna grab this Metal Crush Heller and Gamma Ray. I'm gonna put that on and then I might take a little bit of this on top. And then hopefully this will kind of calm down how white this is and I can also just see if I like either of them or both of them. So I'm grabbing this fan brush. I'm just gonna go into this, get a good amount of color. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's like, <laughs> It does have a sheen, like it, it wasn't pure glitter like I was worried about, but it's definitely like super glitter. Like if you don't like a glittery highlight, this is not for you. It definitely emphasizes texture because it's so glittery. Like if you don't want people to know how textured your skin is, this is not a highlight that will do your thing. I also think I maybe would have liked it better with a denser brush because I feel like because this brush is so fluffy, it's only picking up the glitter and less so the sheen underneath that I would have liked it to grab. Okay, so that's pretty. And I'm gonna grab this. Again, I'm putting a liquid on top of a powder so it may not go super well. I'm putting some of this on my hand. I'm just gonna tap it with my finger and then just kind of like lightly go on my cheekbone. And just like hope for the best. This is not, like again, I don't use like cream or liquid highlights or blushes like ever really. So, okay, that actually, I really like that. I don't know if I would like it on its own, but I, I really like this combo. Yeah, it does still see have like a bit of a, like if I'm looking straight on, you can still kind of see like a white cast which kind of means it's like a little too, a little too white for my skin tone. But I think this would be a really pretty highlight to like mix into stuff or kind of use as like a combo with other highlights. Oh, it's really pretty. I, I really like the formula too. Like I think I would love this in like other shades as well. I think I went a little too low with it because I'm, I'm not used to controlling my hand for highlight, but it's really pretty. I thought I look at the Tin Man right now, so I'm just gonna blend it out on my nose a little bit. Just up, okay. Good enough for highlight. I think that looks really good. I think my complexion has definitely looked better and it's definitely looked worse. So ordinarily, this would be the part of my routine where I put on my MAC Fix Plus. Instead, I'm gonna grab this Glossier Soothing Face Mist. It's a rose water spray and I'm gonna use that. There's two kinds of setting sprays. There's like the kind that makes your makeup last longer and there's the kind that makes your makeup like set, like sink into your skin. And to my understanding, and I could be wrong, and I probably am, the kind that makes your makeup last longer has alcohol in it, whereas the kind that makes your makeup like melt into your skin and like look less powdery has like rose water or some kind of other like nourishing, like usually plant-based extract in it, which is why I'm using this for this step. And then I have a different one that I'm gonna use for my end step where I would usually usually be using the Urban Decay All Nighter. It smells really strongly of rose water, which makes sense, the rose water spray. I think it's not bad. I think I would have liked it if the mist was a little bit finer. It's a little chunky. 
but it's not bad. I don't have any new brow products, so while this dries, I'm just gonna put this uh, ColourPop Brow Boss Gel on my eyebrows. I like, don't have any brow products. I don't, until last year, I like, wouldn't do eyebrows, so I didn't go out of my way to buy brow products that I was just never gonna use, right? So I don't really have all that many brow products. It's literally just like my one or two like tried and true things. Oh, this rose water spray really burns your eyes though. It's like my eyes are burning. My heart rate is really high and I don't know why. I'm literally just sitting here putting makeup on, but my heart rate is like higher than it was yesterday when I was doing a workout, which is super weird. Is it like anxiety? I don't know. Again, sorry, I said this last week, but sorry if I'm really subdued today. I just like, <laughs> I'm in a really weird mood for reasons that are understandable, but it's just not been a good week. And as much as I'm having fun doing this, like I always have like a lot of fun doing my makeup. Like it just really calms me down. I find it very enjoyable to just like mess around with products and see how they end up looking on me. But I also just like usually try to have like a bit higher energy in these videos. And I just kind of, I, I can't really muster it today. But I do think I'm like looking cute. Like honestly, for, considering I didn't know how any of these products performed, this isn't bad. Especially because the base was such a hot mess to start with. Like that foundation, Primer combo was not was not it, but the rest of it's really starting to come together. Okay, so, so I'm gonna grab this Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Primer and use that to prime my eyes. I have not really heard anything about this one way or the other, which is interesting because I feel like everybody has opinions about Fenty Beauty. This is another product that I believe I got at a charity sale. So I don't know how much it costs, but I did not pay that much and I know will tell you that right off the bat. So this feels like nice. Like it feels really like almost like silicone-y, but also like sticky enough for, usually silicone stuff doesn't really feel sticky to me. It just kind of like sinks in really easily and just kind of dissipates. This still feels like tacky. So I feel like eyeshadow would really stick to it. So again, I don't really buy palettes that I don't use. So the stuff I have today, it's also, I think I've probably used at least once before. So for the main palettes, I have these ABH Norvina, like the mini palettes. I have all three here, which I've used the large ones of these and the large ones were like, okay. I don't know if these are the same formula, but I have the little mini ones. And then I have this Marc Jacobs palette in 710 Provo Couture, which is like, it's like this purple pinky kind of thing. And this just looks like I've used it. I actually have no recollection whatsoever, but it looks like I've used it. Again, this is something I think I got at a charity sale. So I think we're just gonna try to pull a look together. And then I have a couple. So I don't remember how I feel about this, but I know I've heard good things. If these are like the big ones, they'll be okay. Nothing to write home about, but not like terrible. You definitely usable. And then I have a couple of like random isolated like single shadows that I also wanted to try because I don't remember how I feel about them at all. Or I don't think I actually have used these. So I have um, three of the Urban Decay Liquid Moon Dust eyeshadows. And then I have, I have this Pat McGrath, like it's like a kind of like a glitter gel type thing. And then I have these Lancome, like these Lancome, like they're also like eyeshadow pencils. So I have a bunch of things. I don't think I'm gonna use everything, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try to use as much as I can. I don't know what color story I want though, is, is the problem here. I'm going to grab this shade. I think it's called With Style. It's this like second one in here. And I'm just gonna grab this like fluffy brush and I'm just gonna put that in my crease just to like put down some base eyeshadow. It's a little ashier than I'd like, but I think that's just the color. So it looks like shadow is going on this primer pretty nicely. Like it's not skipping. It's not doing anything weird. It's putting it on. The one thing that I can't really tell, I'm not gonna be able to tell you guys in this video, like if I like this primer, it's like a keeping your eyeshadow on primer, just cause it's like one of those things where you need like a, an eight hour wear test for. And I don't think I'm gonna be doing that, but I can tell in terms of just like initial application, it looks pretty good. It's not doing anything weird. It's just like, I have shadow on. Great. So now I'm going to take, actually I'm gonna keep using the same brush and I'm gonna do this next shade down, which is otherwise, and just kind of like go into the corner, like just go a little lower and just deepen that a little bit. So these shadows are like blending into each other really nicely, which like if they weren't, I'd be really mad. This is Marc Jacobs. I think these are like, I don't remember, but I feel like I've seen them before in the stores and they're like ridiculously expensive for, what is this? Three, six, seven, seven, seven shades. There's seven shades and I feel like they're probably like 50 something dollars. I don't know, I'll put the price up if I can look it up if I remember to do that, but. They're like an obscene amount of money considering like how many shades you get. So they better freaking perform. Like I know you're just paying for the fact that they're Marc Jacobs, but you know, they better, they better do something. It's turned out a lot like more grayish than I was expecting, but I don't know why. It's pretty grayish actually, except for this like, I feel like this like last shade deceptively makes you think the whole thing is like way more pink purple than it is, but it's all pretty grayish. I'm gonna grab this Norvina palette and I'm gonna grab this shade. What is this? A3, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna grab A3 and a different brush. This is a wet and wild brush and just kinda, I don't know, I'm just gonna, oh shit. Sorry, my camera stopped filming, so I don't know if you guys got that, but this is like insanely powdery. Like, I don't know how to, if you guys can see that, but this is like crazy amounts of kick up for like, just like lightly dipping into that. I feel like immediately don't like how this looks, but I'm gonna give it a fair shot before I like completely write it off. So anyways, I'm just putting this like kind of over my crease, but also like, just kind of a little bit on the lid, just to get like a nice wash of color. I have no like look in mind. I don't really 
know what I'm doing. I'm just like letting what I feel sort of guide me through this process. And I'm just kind of trying to get it even on both sides really is what's happening here. Then I'm going to take Nick Thick's brush and I'm going to grab this shade under here, which is, I think it's C3, this one. And I'm just going to put that a little bit in the corners. Okay, so this one has like no kickback. I don't know what why this one has so much and this one has so little, but it was like a stark difference in how much fallout you get from these. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in frame. I hope I like, haven't been going off frame a lot. Like this table is busier than usual and it's really hard to see my mirror and also keep myself in frame. I usually kind of like angle out my eyeshadow shape because I feel like it makes my eye, it lifts my eyes a bit, but I'm just kind of doing it around it so far. And I don't know if I'm going to keep it that way, but it's sort of what's happening. I will say this is a very fun color story. Like it's, it's kind of like berry-esque. I don't know, it looks nice. Again, sorry if I'm not really explaining what I'm doing. I'm just really trying to focus on the makeup, get out of my head for a bit. So it's like meditative in a way. I don't like makeup's like that for other people, but it really is for me. This is like really, you know, I had doubts, but I feel like we're really starting to pull together a look here. I'm gonna grab this again and just like buff out some edges. The one thing I've noticed the more I've done my makeup is literally like everything will look good the more time you put into it. Like it doesn't matter how atrocious it looks, the more colors you pile on top of each other and the more you blend, it'll eventually like come out looking like something decent. Maybe not good, but definitely like halfway decent and way better than you thought it was gonna be. I don't know if I wanna use this. Let me let me try, let me see how it looks. I'm grabbing this again and I'm gonna grab this shade at the very end, which is called In Bed. And I'm gonna put that just on this middle part of my lid. Oh, perfect. I was hoping that would be like a nice pop of pink. And it is. It is kind of blending in to these other colors though, so I might have to top it with something a little brighter. We're making a like, dark in the edges, but I think we're gonna just grab something later. I'm gonna open this and see. Oh, is this loose? Oh, I'm not gonna, I thought this was a gel, but it's a loose glitter and I don't wanna deal with loose glitter right now. So we're not gonna use this Pat McGrath thing, unfortunately for Miss Pat McGrath. I am gonna grab, this is like, it has like, it's called Recharge. It has like a, I feel like a pink, almost like shift to it. Yeah, cause this one's a little dark. I feel like it's a little too, actually. I'm gonna put these on my hand and see how I feel about them. That's pretty, they're really pretty. So just like swatching these, I know I wanna use them more cause they're so nice, but maybe not today. Today might not be the day. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna grab, oh, might as well. I'm not, I don't wanna use this one, but I'll just swatch it too so we can show, see how they all look. Okay, so this one is this one, which is Zap. And then this one is Recharged, which is like gold, but it like flips pink. Like it's a duochrome, it goes from gold to pink. And then this one is Solstice, which is like this like pinky color, but it has like a lot of blue glitter in it. So like it, it, it shifts like silver blue. I don't know which one I want to use. Damn, this is hard. And then I have these, but I don't really want to use these. I'm not like obsessed with the concept. Like they're pretty, they're pretty and they're so creamy. Like they're crazy creamy, but they're just not light enough for what I, I need for my eye right now. But yeah, like they're super vibrant. Like that's the silver one and that's the gold one. Like look how nuts vibrant that is. They're just not what I want right now, but they're very pretty. I'm gonna grab this and just go in the middle of my eye with it and hope I don't horrendously destroy. Actually, should I put some on my hand first? I'm gonna put it on my hand and decide and see if that's better. And I'm just gonna grab this tiny brush because I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Oh my fucking God. Holy shit. Holy shit, that's pretty. Holy fuck, I love makeup. Oh my God. Like not gonna lie to you guys, this is like so fun. Oh my God. I love makeup. I love makeup so much. I am freaking over the moon. This is so pretty. Why has this just been rotting in my collection this whole time? It's so pretty. See, this is what I mean when I say this is an opportunity to figure out what I've been missing out on that's just been rotting in my collection. Okay, okay, okay. This is so pretty. I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over this. Oh my God. I'm gonna blend out the edges. Just give me a sec. It's just so reflective, like crazy reflective. And I feel like because I'm putting it on, a, like like the color I'm putting it on, it like makes the pink shift like even more obvious. So it just looks even prettier. Oh my God, this is crazy. I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Oh my God. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like losing my mind. This is so pretty. I feel like maybe putting this on bare skin would be even better because I feel like it almost is moving some of the product under it. So you can kind of see like patches showing through, but that's my only grievance. Otherwise it's like, this is so stunning. Like this is insane, insanely beautiful. What if I just like went on directly with this? Let me try that. Oh my God. This is okay. And then I'm just gonna grab this. ET, no, I need a brush, I need a brush. What the brush I was using? Let's grab this brush and just kind of like buff the edges so that it just blends a little bit better. That's so pretty. And then I'm gonna grab this fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into this Norvina, which one is this? Norvina 3 palette. I mostly have been using the Norvina 1. is the one I was using first. I'm gonna grab this Norvina 3 palette and I'm gonna use the shade A1, which is this like light one. I'm just gonna like buff out the top to my like brow bone. Perfect, perfect. And then, oh, that's so pretty. It's so pretty, pretty. Do I want anything in my inner corners? I'm gonna grab that same shade. Actually, no, I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna go back to this Norvina One palette and I'm gonna grab the shade in the like, right here, which is called A2. I'm gonna grab A2 and I'm just gonna put that in my inner corner. Just brighten it up a little. Oh, that brightened it up a lot. 
way more than I thought. And then I'm gonna grab a different little brush. I'm gonna grab this little pencil brush, I think. And I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go with this Marc Jacobs palette again, and I'm gonna grab, because I don't want it to be as powdery, this shade in bed again. I'm just gonna do that on my lower lash line. Beautiful. I'm so consensus. This is good, probably not worth the price. These Norvita palettes are fine. Get them on sale, I got them on sale. They're okay. If you like the color stories, maybe get one that you like the color story of, but they're not like anything to like write home about. They're fine. You get the job done. These, haven't tried them on the eye. It seemed very creamy and very nice and very pigmented on the hand. Didn't try this. These these liquid moon dusts are nuts, like crazy, insane, obsessed. Love these so much. What's next for the eyes? So I have these Urban Decay 24-7 eye pencils that I've heard are really nice, but neither of these colors matches what's going on with my eyes right now. One of them's like an almost black blue, one of them's an almost black green, so I'm not gonna use those. This is an Urban Decay Razor Sharp Water Resistant liquid eyeliner but again the color is just not it i might i might pass i don't want to pass on eyeliner but i just don't have anything that would like be appropriate for this i think maybe i'll try this actually i have this it's a ColourPop liquid liner it's silver i've never tried the ColourPop liquid liners before so maybe i'll try that no it's not silver this is white oh okay yeah i'm gonna pass on that i don't want to do that the thing with liner is i don't really have any liners i haven't used i'm gonna put this one in pink i'll try this it's a the same color pop liner but in pink. I don't know if it's gonna show up because of how dark my eyes are, but we'll try. Oh, it does show up. Okay, it's not super bright or anything, but it does show up. Okay, so I blinked and kind of fucked that up. So give me a second to fix it. Oh, so okay, this is on. I don't know if you can see it. It's really faint. You can't really tell, but they seem nice. They seem very like it dried pretty matte on my hand. It dried pretty quickly. They seem pigmented. They're very liquid, but they dry very quickly and they seem to dry very matte. It's kind of showing up, but you can't really tell because of how pink my eyes are. But I think I like them, especially for the price point. They seem pretty good. And then for my bottom liner, I think that, again I don't have a lot of pencil eyeliners that I haven't used. I have this black pixie pencil liner that I might have used, but I also might have not used. I can't really remember, so I'm gonna try that on my waterline now. So the issue with this is it's incredibly scratchy and not super pigmented. Like it's not very black and it's also super scratchy so it's like i just don't know why i would ever want to put it on like my eyes are burning but otherwise i think my eyes look pretty pretty solid pretty cute not bad okay so for mascara i have this is most of my mascaras i've used because i try to use mascaras pretty quickly as i get them and not buy more until i've cut out of a few out of my out of my life this one i bought a while ago and then didn't use it's a blink tubing mascara i got it because i really wanted to try a, new, a tubing mascara i've never tried them before i have no idea how they're how they perform or what they're like this is the only one that i could get like really easily in canada because they sell it at sephora and i think blink was the first one that did tubing mascaras i heard really good things with the thrive cosmetics tubing mascara but i just don't have access to that it is kind of weird to me that it's like a tube that has plastic wrap over and then it comes in this like metal tin it's a little strange but yeah so it's a tubing mascara i have never tried one before but i'm very excited to I feel like I kept holding off on it because I was like intimidated by the concept of tubing mascara and I didn't want to wear it somewhere where I didn't know how I was going to perform on my eyes in case it started like running or like flaking off. I like, just don't know how tubing mascaras work. My understanding is when you wash them instead of it like flaking off like normal mascara does or just like running, it like, comes off in tubes, which is why it's called tubing mascara. But I am very intrigued as I was when I purchased this. It's like I got it because I was intrigued by the concept and then I was very intimidated by the concept so I just never ended up using it. But this video is time, baby. It's time to get over the fear of the tubing mascara. And if I love this tubing mascara, I might just become a tubing mascara bitch like full time, 24 seven. Look at all the swatches on my hand, like seriously. So again, this is like, I think the first tubing mascara. To my understanding, it is not the best. It is not most people's favorite tubing mascaras, but I am intrigued by this. It's not really doing much for like lifting. I think this is definitely something that you have to use like an eyelash curler before you use it. Cause it's not really doing anything to lift or curl my lashes. It is coating them very nicely and not at all in a clumpy way. Like, okay, so the one thing is, this is super wet and it like immediately transferred to my like top lid. It's only coated my lashes, they look black. It hasn't clumped them, which is very nice, but it's just like, like it's giving me length. I don't even know if it's giving, I think it's just like literally making my lashes black. I think if you have lashes and you curl them and you like the length and you like the volume, this does a lot to like coat them. But honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really disappointed in this because I really wanted to fall in love with this concept because like removing tubing mascara sounds like a dream. Like it just sounds so easy and so convenient because mascara is so hard to get off. Like anyone who like regularly wears it knows it's like one of the hardest parts of your makeup routine. Just like get off of your face like fully. Like even if you use like an oil-based remover and you scrub at it, it like takes forever to get all your mascara off. So I was really hoping that this would like change my life and maybe like the other ones do. But this is just like super underwhelming. Like all it's done is put mascara on my top lid. Yeah, it just looks like I don't know how to put mascara on because all that's on my top lid, my actual lashes, they don't look particularly different. They just look kind of darker. So that's kind of a flop. I'm sorry, tubing mascara. I was rooting for you, but I don't like you, which is sad. I want to fix this again. I'm gonna go over it with the pink again. Okay, I did go over the parts where I'd gotten mascara on with this liner and it went over it. So it does seem to have a lot of pigment. The ColourPop liner, that's great, fantastic. So for lips, I have 
two options, but they're from the same brand. Basically, when I was in New York a couple years ago, I'm trying to think when, almost three years ago, like two and a half, I got to try Makeup Revolution for the first time because they had Ulta there and we don't have Ulta hair. And they had these things that I got because they kind of seemed like knockoff Kylie lip kits. Like they were like liquid lipstick pencil duos and they were really cheap. And I got, a, I think I got three or four, but I can only find two. And looking at these now, I don't know why I got both of them because they look very similar. One of them is a little pinkier. So I guess I'm gonna use this one that's a little pinkier, but like they are virtually identical. Like it's kind of sad, but so I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna use this one, which is the Echolon, Echolon or as Echelon. I don't know if it's Echelon or Echelon, I don't know. I think it's upper Echelon. So I'm gonna use the Echelon uh, liner and lipstick and just put those on. Again, these came in like little kits. I was enticed because they reminded me of the Kylie lip kits, but without the Kylie lip kit cost or without funding the Kardashian Jenner's. But I don't know how they perform at all. I think I swatched them in stores and I, they seemed creamy and they seemed nice, but I have no recollection otherwise. Okay, I lied. If these were creamy in stores, they're certainly not creamy now. Yeah, these are not creamy. They're super crumbly and they're really hard to put on, which I guess makes sense because these are liners for liquid lipsticks and you don't want those to budge, but my God. Yeah, mm -mm. liner sucks. Do not like this. This though, this lipstick seems okay. It's like, it's pretty thin. I have a feeling it's gonna dry down pretty matte. It's not like, it's a nude, so like the coverage is fine. Nothing to write home about, but nothing terrible. I don't know, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's a lipstick. It's, the, so the liner is like solidly bad. The lipstick's just like, it's a lipstick. There's been better liquid lipsticks. There have been worse liquid lipsticks. It's not really memorable. It's drying down pretty quickly. Oh, oh, mm -mm. actually I changed my mind. This is one of those like hyper drying liquid lipsticks where if your lips are not like perfectly like exfoliated, you're gonna have really, your lips are gonna look super textured and kind of buttholey. Every crevice of your lips is visible with these. The thing is though, the Kylie lip kits are also like that. To my understanding is they were also incredibly drying and incredibly flaky. So if that is what you want, these seem to be a solid dupe for a much lower price point. But if you want your lips to like look healthy, this is not it, but neither the Kylie lip kits. Yeah, I don't love how my lips look with this. The color is nice though. The color is nice. The price point is good if that's the kind of lip you want. It's just not the kind of lip that I, I'm usually after. The other thing I have is, is not really like, I'm t this is pretty much the end of my makeup routine. Like the next step would be for me, me to put on like a setting spray and I'd be done. But I might as well, I haven't tried this ColourPop freckle pen that I got a couple months ago yet. I kind of want to try it now. Like dot it on my hand. So my understanding is you kind of like dot it and then you just like tap it out. So let's just do that, I guess. I got soft brown, but now I'm kind of like, should I have gotten the darker one? I don't know what freckles look like. So I don't know if I'm doing this properly. Probably not. I will say this does look pretty natural. Like as far as like fake freckles go, I don't know if you guys can see them on camera, but this is just the right shade I think for me where it blends in enough that it's not like you have marker all over your face. But if someone's paying attention, you could see that it's like little fake freckles. This is fun, I think for the kid in me that like when I was a child, I was really envious of like little white girls that had freckles. I don't know why. I just thought it was very pretty and I wanted that for myself. I was just like, oh, you have little fun dots on your face. Even though like from what I've heard from people with freckles, a lot of people just don't like having them and like try to get them covered up, which is very sad to me. I'm gonna do a couple of these like a little more forcefully because that's how like real freckles are, right? The Freck Freckle Pen, I've heard is like the most realistic fake freckle thing, but she's expensive. She's now available at Support Canada though. So maybe if I really gain a lust for freckles, we'll try her out, but that's cute. I'm not mad. These, are, these don't look realistic because I don't know how to realistically apply freckles. Like I need to study freckles better to know how they like go on someone's face, but it's cute. It's a cute concept. That's it. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up with this setting brush. So this is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Again, I got this because of years, a couple of years ago, this was like all the rage. Everybody and their mother would like, know, like this shit was impossible to find. It was always sold out. People were crazy about the spray. Kept your makeup on, had a beautiful mist. Like people love this to set their makeup with. And I got it and then never tried it because I just had other tried and true setting sprays that I just liked more. Like it's the way I always use my Urban Decay All Nighter. But I think now is the time. Oop, okay. People were not kidding. The mist on this is insane. Insane. Like I love this mist. This is the best mist I've ever used in my life, I think, on a setting spray. Like this is, I cannot explain to you how nice this mist is. The smell sucks, but the mist is very good. If it keeps my makeup on, I will fight through the smell just because of how nice that mist is. Yeah, okay, so to sum up, I think, let's see. Primer, don't have really any opinions on it. Foundation was a no. Concealer was okay. Powders were both good, like the powders. This rose water spray, like the, the spray could have been better, but the actual product, Pretty nice. It's really strong smell, so you don't like scented products, not for you, but otherwise really nice. Laguna bronzer, really nice. The liquid blush or the cream Charlotte Tilbury blush was really nice. The combo of highlighters was really nice. The KVD one, I wouldn't recommend it if you don't like glitter highlighters, but if you do like glitter, very nice highlighter, very nice formula. The, the liquid J-Cat one, again, really nice. Not quite the color for me, but the formula itself, very pretty. This Marc Jacobs palette, really nice, really liked it. Maybe not for the price point, but 
the product itself really good. The ABH mini palettes and Orvina minis, pretty okay. Get them on sale, don't pay full price. And get the one that has a color story that speaks to you the most, but like, they're okay, they're, they're pretty average. This uh, Blink Chibi Mascara, epic fail, very sad, very disappointed, really, really wanted to love this, but disappointing. These ColourPop liquid liners seem pretty nice. Freckle stick, pretty nice. Oh, the Fenty eye primer, pretty nice. I, again, I can't speak to how long it makes your makeup or your, your, your shadow like last, but in terms of just initial application, it seemed really nice. Made my shadows look really good. Felt sticky, felt tacky, went on really smoothly. Pretty good. Pixie eye pencil, pretty, pretty dry. Not a huge fan. These moon dust, this shit, insane. Highly recommend. And then the Makeup Revolution lip pencils, hard pass. Lipsticks, if you like the really dry matte butthole lip, they're great. If you don't love that look, then you're not gonna enjoy these. And then yeah, Morphing Setting Mist, freaking aces. Incredible, I think that's everything. Overall, like, Considering I never used any of these products before and they were all complete wild cards working together, my face looks okay, you know? I, I really actually love how the eyes turned out. The lip color I like, don't love the formula. And I think even though the base of my face was like terrible, the like, the, I think the blush and the highlight and the bronzer really like pulled it together. I'm a fan, I like it. Did, did, did the dang job. Yeah, so with that, I am going to wrap up this video. If you wanted to hang out with me on other social platforms, you can follow me on Twitter and you can follow me on Instagram. And if you wanted to stay tuned for more content from me, I post new videos every Wednesday so you can subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and I will see you guys all next week.